This week we're going to shoot some stuff up. It's Beachhead for the Commodore 64. Well, let's open the YARG file on this game and see what it's about. Beachhead was written in 1983 by Access Software for the Commodore 64 and numerous other computer platforms of the day. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, you bunch of freaks. It's not about a sex act done at the beach. It's about something else entirely different. Beachhead is actually a multi-scenario combat game that has spawned many sequels over the years, including the excellent Beachhead 2 The Dictator Strikes Back and the not-so-great Beachhead 2000 and Beachhead 2002 both of which were probably coded by untrained monkeys. Well, that's all I really have for this title, so why don't we just get the review started? Once you load up Beachhead and select the skill level you want to play at, you'll be presented with the aerial recon screen. Your fleet of ships is represented at the top right corner by a series of dots, and the enemy's fleet is guarding the bay in another series of dots near the bottom left corner. You're going to have to fight the enemy fleet eventually. There's two ways to do it. You can either go for the frontal assault, right through the middle there, or you can go through the secret passage, uh, which is off to the left. Basically, if you use the secret passage, you get to take the enemy by surprise, which means there are fewer planes available to attack you. The secret passage is essentially a large cavern that is filled with mines and is constantly shooting random torpedoes at you. You have 10 ships at your disposal as indicated by the little dots at the bottom of the screen. So you'll basically have to navigate this thing 10 times while losing as few ships as possible. As you successfully navigate ships through the cavern, they will turn white at the bottom of the screen. So in this case, we only have the one left. And then I can show you guys the next phase. In the next phase, we are back to the aerial map, and we're heading towards the enemy fleet, who we'll engage with now. In this phase of the game, you're controlling the fleet's anti-aircraft gun. Yes, they only have one anti-aircraft gun for the entire fleet, don't ask. But at any rate, uh, you're basically just trying to shoot down enemy planes before they manage to bomb the fleet and sink more ships. Which, since I went through the secret passage, this part shouldn't take too long because I took the enemy fleet by surprise. After dealing with the planes, the next phase is the ship-to-ship -ship combat. Basically this works like the old artillery games you've probably seen. You are adjusting the elevation of the gun, and it'll tell you as you fire how far you've missed the target by, either you're short or you're long, depending on where your shot falls. Uh, keep in mind that while you're doing this, the enemy's shooting at you as well, so uh, you want to take care of the ship that's currently shooting at you, because it's starting to get a bead on your location. You'll also notice there's an aircraft carrier that is moving off the screen. That's sort of an optional target of opportunity, which is worth some points. Once you've taken care of the enemy fleet, it's time to hit the beach. Once you've reached the beach, you're given two tanks for every ship that survived for a maximum of up to eight tanks. These tanks, unfortunately, are broken. They only seem to go at one standard speed, and all you can control is the up and down and firing of the tank. The turret doesn't move, they don't go any faster or slower, and everything that's on the screen at this point will kill you. Although the basic layout of the screen stays the same, the placement of some of the gun turrets and enemy tanks and things does change a little bit depending on how far along you are and destroying the main base at the end you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. 
you'll probably die many times on the screen right here because it's it can be a, a bear to try to hit these gun emplacements and avoid stuff on the screen at the same time so you'll just keep dying like that but eventually you'll be able to get a few tanks through their outer defenses and attack their main fortification. The dictator's main fortress kind of looks like a giant anthill with a huge gun at the top. The objective here is to shoot all the little white squares as quickly as possible before the main gun there gets a bead on you and kills you. But if you don't get them all the first try, which you won't, don't worry because the game keeps track of how many hits the fortress took. So once you've reach the number of hits required, it doesn't matter how many attempts you make, you'll blow up the fortress. But you will have to go through the gauntlet every time you die at that last screen. But some of the tanks and turrets and whatnot have been moved around to make the game more interesting, I guess. But if you're good enough and everything goes according to your plans, uh, you'll have your chance to take out the main base permanently and it's kind of satisfying to see the little surrender flag at the end of the game. And of course, if you made the top 10, don't forget to leave your mushroom stamp in the top 10 list there. I'm going to go ahead and give Beachhead a final score of an A, because it's one of those classic games that's even playable today. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. If there's a specific game you'd like me to review, drop me a note in the comment box below. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you want to see more of my stuff, why not subscribe? Also, if you really want to, you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching.